somebody's inside there, I mean, that person's in big trouble. You could be struck dead by God. Uh, he's not supposed to be in there. Nobody isn't supposed to be in there. But when he went in there, somebody was in there. And of course, what is going to happen? If you're in your house and you're supposed to be there alone, and you go find somebody in there, you start to get, like, you know, well, how did this person get in here? And the, f the first thing the angel said to him is the same thing Jesus always said to his disciples, like when you know they are scared. He said, Zacharias was sorry, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wa wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Amen? And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife was stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, Amen. that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them, and remained speechless. And it came to pass that, as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house, and in his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself three months, saying, "Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein He looked on me to take away my reproach from among men." Amen. Hallelujah. And the scripture said, um, 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 it's the scripture said, speaking of, um, mm, the, the scripture said here that, that, that Elizabeth, go to verse, um, verse 40. Go to verse 40. If we go to verse 40. Oh, shucks. I'm sad. I'm just saying. All right, sorry about that. Go to verse 40. The scripture said, And when Mary went to see Elizabeth, she entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. I just read that because the Bible said that this baby was going to be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Right? And so the scripture tells you here, the scripture tells you here about Mary, I mean Elizabeth and Zacharias. They were old and they were out of the, the time of still having children, especially the wife. And um, but they were faithful to God. They didn't understand why they never had a child. But God didn't forget them. Their time had not come as yet. And when their time came, it was going to come big time. Very special. So the scripture said that when um, Zacharias was ministering and his, it was his turn, it was his course, you know, he had a special season to minister. And then he was going to minister. When he was going to minister in there, one day when he went in there, he saw an angel standing there. And the angel said, he got scared. scared. He was afraid. 
He said, well, what happened? I mean, you know, and the angel said, sir, not. Notice what the angel said to him. He said, he said, um, thy prayer is heard. He said, I know you've been praying to have a child. And I'm telling you right now that God heard your prayer. All this time you've been praying, God heard your prayer. And he said, your wife is going to have a son. And he told him, now, listen to me. There are certain things that are meaningful here. Because the, the angel was standing there, knew his name, right? And if, if somebody, like the other day when we were doing the study, when, um, when the Lord was met, when Mary did not know it was Jesus was in the garden, she thought well, it was the garden of um, a time of resurrection. But when he called her by name, she knew that, well, if somebody's calling me by my name, then it should be somebody who knows me, right? And she recognized the voice, and she knew his name. But if somebody's calling by my name, it must be somebody who knows me. And the angel could call him by name, knew his name, and knew his wife's name also, and knew exactly what was going on in their home, and what was going on in their marriage life, and how they had been barren, I mean they had no child. The angel knew all of that. So eventually, the angel is supposed to realize that somebody who is familiar with me. This person knows something about me. And he's coming to tell me a message from God to say that I'm going to have a son. And he told me the name of the son too. He told me what isn't going to be the name of the son. He's going to call him John. And then he said to him that, that notice he said, um, um, And thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. So he's telling him that it's going to change all together for you right now. And God, God is going to change things all around for you right now. And you're going to be happy. You're going to have gladness in your home. And then after he told him that, he told him the prophecy that was in Malachi, what we read before. And he told him that he shall go in the spirit and power of Elijah or Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And that's exactly what we read here in Malachi. He said here, you shall go before him, um, you shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. And he said he will come before the Lord come. Now, what is happening here? After the angel lay out the whole thing, and told him what God had said, he, 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 he reconciled it with a prophecy, and he reconciled it with his life, and his state, the, um, the, the, the state of his marital life, and, and all of that, and he knew his name and all of this, but when he finished talking to him about all of this, right, Zechariah was looking at him and asked him, so how am I going to know that this is going to happen? And, and it, I, I know it's like, you know, the angel is saying like, I mean, what, what is the meaning of this? Right? You know, sometimes we are so unbelieving when God is speaking to us that it's like ridiculous. How do he know his name? He knows his wife's name. He tells him the prophecy. He tells him everything and he, everything is lined up in order. And he told him if he was a high priest, he must have known the prophecy. Right? Because just like how I know it today, as a, a teacher of the word, I know he must have known it. He has to know these things in the, written in the law. And then the angel said to him, you know something? I am Gabriel. You must have heard of me, right? Because you studied the books of the Old Testament. You must have heard of Gabriel. He said, I'm Gabriel. Let me introduce myself to you. Are you asking for a sign? God is going to make you the sign. There was no need for you to ask for a sign. So now the sign is going to be on you. You will be dumb until it be performed. So now every day you're going to have a prayer that it be performed because if not, you can't speak again. Right? I am not, I'm not even going to... But I'm just showing you that um, there was no need there was no need for him to ask 
Whereby shall I know? Because God had said it, and if God had said it, that's all he needed to know, that God had said it. Oh my Lord. Alright, so, the scripture said that many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord God. And that's exactly what John the Baptist was doing. When he came, when he came, he Bible said that, that the people went out to him in droves, who were baptized, all right? From the publicans, the sinners, the, um, the even Pharisees, many of them, and he drove them back, right? He did a great work preparing the people for the coming of the Lord. And so it was, John the Baptist was prophesied of as Elijah. Now, was John the Baptist born? Yes, he was born. And the scripture tells you, um, if you just go a little further, it said, um, it just said that in verse 58, um, the neighbors and the cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her, right? And she had a baby. And when it came to the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so. His name shall be called John. And the people were saying like, But John? They said unto him, There is nobody in that kindred with that name. He said, Well, the mother believed what the angel said because he had told her what, what happened with the vision. And, she, and, he, and they made signs to the father and said, what do you have to say, Daddy? I mean, and this thing, well, I mean, how, why is Mommy saying must call him John? And he wrote on a tablet, his name is John, verse 63. And his mouth was open immediately. <laughs> immediately. So, as I said to you, immediately, as soon as he wrote it, he started to talk again. And then he just, he just went off in prison, God, and... All of these things that you, you can read right down to the end of the chapter, right? But, so you know, you learn a lesson from that. Don't, don't, don't be playing games with God and don't ask questions about things that are, God has said that are just plain. And, because if you ask for a sign, you might end up being the sign, right? And God gave him the sign on himself. He never expected that. This was a, a big problem in Israel, right? And even until today, people love to be asking for a sign. And Jesus got to a point where he said, the man said, except you see signs, you wouldn't believe. I mean, I mean what, what is this thing about you always have to be seen a sign when God has said it? Why, why do you need have to be seen a sign? Why do you have to be seen a sign? No sign. I mean, in other words, for example, if, if I know that I'm in, in, in Manhattan, right? Why do I ever see a sign that I'm in Manhattan? I know I'm in Manhattan. Right? So why do I have to see a sign that says I'm in Manhattan? Why? Right? If I know I'm in my house, why do I have to be told that I'm in my house? You already know that you're there. And some things where God is concerned, you have to believe what God says. And not to be asking for sign, sign. You go ask for sign. Go on. You might either don't get any, right? But God don't always give you a sign. Or you might end up getting a sign from the devil. Or you might be the sign. Okay? Because God is a God of faith. The Bible said it just shall live by faith. And, if any, and that is how we live by faith. All right. So let's go on to um, another scripture here. In, um, in another scripture we want to look at. Is um, in in um, Matthew chapter seventeen, Matthew Matthew chapter sixteen, right? And we're talking about Elijah in prophecy. And the scripture says in verse thirteen to seventeen, right? It says when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 
they said unto him, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others, Jer Eli which is Elijah, others, Jeremiah, which is Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. So as I said to you, Israel was looking for these two, the Messiah, and they were looking for the Elijah. And I, I, I have a song which I already changed it around many years ago. I remember it. We're going to see it later on. They were looking for the Messiah, and they were looking for the Elijah. Okay? But what is happening here is that when, when the Messiah came, they thought it was the Elijah. Some of them were saying maybe it's Jeremiah. Some of them is saying they actually said he was a prophet. Some didn't actually know what, who he was, but they, some were saying he was the Elijah. But the problem was, among the answers that the disciples were getting, were giving the Lord, none of them was correct. None of them was correct. All of them were off. Right? But they were giving the answers based upon what they knew and the scripture. And according to them, there was going to come an Elijah. Right? At the time when they were at calling Jesus Elijah. Alright, we're going to go. We're going to go some more. Into it. We're going to sing a song. And then I come back to, I come back to the reading. I'm going to come back to the reading. Okay? Then we're going to go into... Um, Matthew 17, and um, we're gonna look because some we're gonna see because in, in order for us to understand really who the Elijah is, right? You might I don't know if you wanna be like Zacharias who like you know understand what the word is saying, but you see what happened to Zacharias because he did not believe, right? But we're gonna see because Jesus is gonna straighten this thing out all together. Right? He got straightened it out as to let us know who is Elijah and of course who is the Messiah. But he told Peter here, he said, you never knew this because people were talking about it because the people around him didn't know. But he said it was a revelation from heaven above why he knew who he was. And so it is, a revelation. A revelation. Some things are known of God by revelation. When Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, he couldn't remember the dream much more, and he wanted the interpretation. And nobody could tell him. But Daniel, he got the revelation. Right? And today when we read the book of Revelation, that's what it is. A lot of things which are revealed. Okay? So today we are talking about the, uh, Elijah and prophecies. And the question is, did we miss his return? Did we miss his return? Did he return? Because the Bible said return. Did we miss his return? Did, did we miss his return? Okay? That's it. Okay? We're going to sing this. We're going to sing this. I've, I've ministered his son in the garden.
riding with him. And all the night around me befalling, but he bid me go with a voice of woe. And so it was. Yeah, we want to stay in the garden with him, and sometimes we just want to stay there, but there are other things to do because time is going on. Amen? Time is rolling. Amen. So let's go to Matthew chapter 17. And um, Jesus had said that in 16 verse 28, he said, Verily I said to you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man come, come in, in his kingdom. And so Matthew 17, it says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment became as the light. Excuse me. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise also shall the Son of Man suffer them. Then the disciples understood that he spake to them of John the Baptist. It was a rude awakening. It was like, they said, like coming out of midnight into midday. And if we go with the Luke chapter 8, let's take a reference from there before we start to talk about this. It says that um, Luke chapter 8, verses 29 to 